problem of food security and having adequate, affordable, nutritional food supply. Now, the way we define the problem is as steady access to affordable, healthy foods is essential in order to uphold a healthy, nutritional diet. Ensuring equal dispensation of the benefits and vulnerabilities of the aspects of the modern food, food industry, <clears throat> including cultivation, production, transportation, and distribution, are fundamental to developing and sustaining a secure food network. It is in this way that food security uh, expands beyond being a social concern, but one that can also be classified as a public health and economic concern. Now, the most popular way, now, most popular, not the most effective way, of defining um, lack of food security is through food deserts. And a food desert needs to, uh, must meet two criteria to be labeled as such, low access and low income. Low access is defined as 33% of the population living over a mile away from a supermarket, whereas low income is defined as uh, over 25% of the population being below the poverty line. Now in America, 23.5 million people are currently living in a food desert, the majority of which are in the southwest to western regions of the United States. In fact, oh, not yet. Thank you. <laughs> uh, states such as Nebraska, Idaho, Oregon, New Mexico, Colorado, Arizona, and South Dakota are almost exclusively food deserts. However, food deserts are not the most um, effective way of defining the problem. Uh, the way that we're measuring it is affordability of fresh and healthy food, access to fresh healthy food, and education levels regarding healthy eating. Um, <clears throat> access to nutritious food. Um, in Massachusetts, uh, as you can see here, we rank among the lowest states in the nation for supermarket density. So while there may be a supermarket within a mile of you, there might only be one option, and that might not always be the best option for you. Um, in fact, Boston has 30% fewer supermarkets per capita than the rest of the nation. And so we really do not have that many supermarkets. They might be uh, distributed such that we don't have any food deserts. However, it's still a problem. Uh, affordability. Um, the nearest supermarket to you may not always be the best option, as I said earlier. Um, it might be extremely expensive, ex so expensive that you can't afford to shop there every single week. Uh, Boston has poverty issues. In Roxbury, the poverty rate is 27.1%. In Mission Hill, 35.2%. In Kenmore, 36.3%. In South End, 24%. And so those living in low po poverty cannot always shop at the closest grocery store. Um, one of the biggest issues in uh, lack of food security is education. Um, people simply don't know how to, get afford how to get affordable healthy food and they don't know how to make it themselves. Um, one of the best ways to inform people of this is through food markets. Uh, food markets can often uh, give samplings and demonstrations to show how to uh, correctly prepare your food. However, the Massachusetts food market regulations are such that it severely restricts this. In fact, it's almost impossible to have sampling or demonstrations. So, <clears throat> Looking at the effect in Boston, as was stated, as Mark stated, the poverty line in each area of the Stony Brook communities is at least 25% of the population is living at or below the poverty line. And when you have individuals that have lower income, they tend to might work more hours to make up for that lower income or can't afford the food. So they tend to opt for options that are frozen or processed with preservatives. So not only does them not being able to afford the food and then not being able to access the food, it really like all ties in together. So in our interviews with stakeholders, we really wanted to 
delve outside of just interviewing the organizations that we looked at. So we looked at interviewing those in the food industry itself. And so we interviewed someone in the production side of the food industry, uh, Elizabeth Dorner. She works for Newlywed Foods, which is a production of breads and doughs, but they also do research in flavorings and cost. And so we really were interested in interviewing her to see the production side. And then we interviewed Amanda Elian, which is a general manager at Berry Line, which is a frozen yogurt place, a Boston-based frozen yogurt who started on the notion that they wanted to provide a local, healthy alternative for those treats that everyone likes. And we interviewed Lucas Murray, who is the kitchen director at Boston Rescue Mission. So in our interview with Elizabeth Dorner, she was brought up three main points. Cost of food, how making healthy food a lifestyle, and education. So one of her main points was that cost of food is driven by customer and consumer production and consumer relationship, and that when the producer wants to make the food item, they look into the area that it's, you know, it, most distributed, it most goes out, and that the, so the lower cost of the food has lower um, quality of products, and that directly relates into the fact that lower income buying the processed frozen foods are getting lower quality foods. Also, she mentioned that healthy lifestyle and organic you know, um, gluten-free, sugar-free, low-fat kind of became a fad, especially in like higher income families. And she really wanted to see a change in, from it being a fad to a, a lifestyle, to t teaching kids younger, to teaching families that don't necessarily have that, uh, have that education, that maybe didn't go to school themselves, maybe are here on a green card or maybe here illegally and she really thought that that was a huge factor in changing the way that we are. So Amanda, she talked about healthy alternatives. So one thing that she said was she noticed that families come in with their children and the children are really excited and you know to them it's like the, such a treat and it's healthy, no, low sugar.